There can be no life without order. About three minutes. Good, yep. evil, darkness, life. That must be. Hey, everybody! Welcome to our Dark Siders Two live stream. I'm Lorenzo Valorio with Games Radar, and I'm here with associate editor of Acumen Magazine, Ryan Telgenik. Lemon Meringue, Jay Fitzloff, Vigil Games. <laughs> Manhattan, Ben Curitan. Lead, lead combat designer. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. What's up, guys? How you doing today? Awesome. Yeah, feeling good. All right, so we're uh, starting off at the beginning here. Looks like uh, a recap of the previous game. Indeed. Yeah, because if you don't, you know, there are going to be a few people who haven't played Darksiders once, so we figure at least... Uh, what? Yeah, it could happen. You they know should. I mean? They yeah. should. Yeah, get on that, guys. Let's Think about get this. on that. This could be somebody's first game they've ever played in their life. This is somebody's first video game and they think every game starts out with no, four Can horsemen the the <laughs> <laughs> that I only fire. count three three Surprise. Is that an oversight? Uh -huh. no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we figured like I'd give you a quick recap, but like just so nobody's lost coming into the game, doesn't know uh, what's up, give you a quick recap of the game, where you're at. <laughs> right, and right. on in. Well, this is a few new details on these guys, too. So you actually get to see the other two that you haven't mm -hmm. talked about the, yet. The sort of. So, sort of, ones, yeah. You yeah. see that yeah. one's a, a female. And uh, some people have asked, you know, do you see the other two horsemen in the game? You can see them right now. Yeah, they're right there. You go. Spo by the way, spoiler alert, everybody, on this whole thing. Like, I don't want any internet complaining saying, yeah, just don't watch it. The game comes out in like eight minutes. So. Right, yeah, exactly. Just go <laughs> I mean, if you don't want to spoil it. Midnight lunch tonight. You guys excited yeah. for that? I'm excited. Yeah, I I'm excited. I'm excited. I know Ryan is excited. He looks excited. I'm, I'm super excited. <laughs> Awkward silence. Mm. Yeah. If you were at a midnight signing and dudes asked you to jump up and down for something, what's the lowest bar you would jump up and down for something? A oh, t-shirt? I mean, a Klondike? Klondike bar? I, 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 <laughs> I'd consider jumping up and down, you know, for even just five dollars. Five dollars? My health. What if I was to jump up and down and I had a piece of candy? Game. It had the game logo on it. The candy. Uh, what are you talking jumping, about? Yeah. Would you jump up and down for a piece of game logo candy? I would. Well, what kind of candy are we talking about here? Mm, Werther's original. Oh, yes, uh, I would. I love <laughs> where there's a good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, obviously. That's, that's yeah. a candy that I'd share with my grandson and his grandson. <laughs> Do you, like, literally share the same piece, or <laughs> what kind of share are you talking about here? <laughs> well, he probably didn't bite into it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, so Darksiders. Oh, yeah. We got hey. Darksiders here. Intro to the game. He's in a, a blizzard. It's like... <laughs> What's happening? We we have the developers here. What's happening right now, guys? Sorry. So, so you know, Death says my brother wore. I know he didn't start an apocalypse. That's that's a bunch of crap. I'm gonna clear his name. So, he's on a quest. Uh, yeah, humanity. I think that's all safe to say. Yeah, to restore humanity because yep. that is kind of a loophole to get out of uh, war having caused the apocalypse. So, he's about to see a guy called the Crow Father, who is the keeper of secrets. He's a guy that just knows how the universe works, knows a little bit about everything, so he's going to him to try and find out a way to uh, get his brother's war, his name cleared, and uh, Crowfather happens to live in uh, this icy veil. Super icy. He, pref he prefers the cold. Yeah, he exactly. doesn't like. He must. And death he is likes already. Cold weather. Yeah. He, yeah. He's riding yeah. his horse already. We kick, yeah, that, yeah, everybody complained last time. It took about halfway to start the game, so, so you literally begin yeah. on the back of your horse this time. He's in a true rider. Chicago, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> <laughs> And the other one is, I mean, you'll see, uh, you'll see this later on, there's a lot more open world areas. Mm -hmm. And again, so, you, you know, you start here, and then uh, basically right after you finish this first part, this takes, well, we'll see, but, you know, I'm going to take a shot about 20 minutes or so. Then you go into kind of open world areas, so you have the horse right away again, just so it felt unfair to start in these huge worlds, and you have to walk the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Or do a roll, roll dash. Yeah, roll dash, Speed roll dash up. across the countryside. It's pretty sweet, too, because, like, um, you know, obviously Death is a much more agile fighter than War, because War is, like, all about brute force and stuff, and Death, I mean, when I, when I played this section, too, was he's just so much quicker and a lot more dodging than it is, like, trying to block or anything like that. Yeah, he actually doesn't block. No. Nope. Nope. That was pretty interesting. Because you gotta say that, too, if you played the game, if you played Darksiders 2 like you were War, you're gonna die. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's almost a guarantee. You always yep. gotta be on the move. So you just you just pick up an axe just then? Indeed, I walked over in a, uh, to an axe. I didn't uh, actually have to go into the menu to equip it. You can actually stand over it, which I love because there's nothing more for like maddening this. than like playing a game where you get tons of loot but having to dig through menus every two seconds to equip the new stuff. Yeah, exactly. Pause so as long as it's game. still on your screen, you can just 
uh, hit the back button or the select button on PlayStation and right. auto equip it. It's really nice. That's just one of those quality of life things that we wanted to add. There's a lot of those in this game to make <laughs> everything just much easier. Quality of life for yeah, death. That's what we call it. Quality of death. How's quality that? of death. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, we are live, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to shoot them out in the uh, the comments or the uh, the live chat, and then uh, we'll try to get those answers answered for you. Ooh. Nice one. Well played. So here's another one. I see some nice wraps. It's a positive one. Defense, instant <laughs> equip. I know. You can tell you're level one. It has one? Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. I noticed, too, uh, that uh, you guys decided to add the damage indicators into your Dark 2. Uh, when that wasn't exi that, that, that didn't exist in one, is there any particular reason for that? Or? It's the loot because you figure you're going to be picking sure. up all these new <laughs> items and you're going to want instant feedback as is this working? Is this better? Right. Or even like uh, you know, because some weapons have fire damage. Sure. And when you do fire damage, it'll be the number will be flaming. Exactly. So yeah. just to know is this guy even affected by fire damage okay. or and stuff. And then the all important when you see zero zero zero, you're like. What am I doing wrong, or what's <laughs> well, what's going on here? And I think one thing I really, really appreciated about the damage indicators is that there's even an option to turn that off. Like if yeah, I don't want exactly. to see those numbers, like that's uh, I thought that was a really great option to have. Yeah, a lot of people actually ask about that because they don't want to see damage numbers. Sure. Although I think if you give it some time, it'll really grow on you because you could just see those big numbers keep increasing and keep, yeah. keep increasing. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, you get a, a thousand. Thousand damage crit, and then you get a new piece of loot, and then you're doing fifteen hundred crits. It's, it feels pretty uh, rewarding. Yeah. Crowfather's creeping me out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> He's creeping me out. He's making some really weird noises. Don't accept any candy from him. Uh, <laughs> I, don't know. I would not eat his worthers. I'll tell you that. <laughs> So how would you say the uh, combo system compares to the first? And Because, you know, in the first game, didn't you gather, like, souls or orbs or something like that that could be used to purchase new combos? Now, how would yeah, you say gold. this compares? Yeah, it's now gold. it's all you buy all your combos. Well, you, start, you, have, you start off with some combos and yeah. some stuff that happens, but then all other are bought uh, through vendors. So just like you would buy new equipment, there's a vendor in each town that'll sell you moves. Scythe moves, heavy weapon moves, light weapon moves. Yep. And then, um, but the combos themselves... Can you, I don't know, Ben, can you attribute a number to it? Like it has, it's it's just so much richer, there's, it's hard for me to There's even, a lot of them, yeah. Yeah, encapsulate. I mean, like, and the, the main thing is not the total number of moves, of which we do sure. have a lot of. It's the ability to, you know, chain them into each other. Like we created a, a whole new system called crossover moves where, like say, for example, you just mash on X. And you can you can pretty much beat the whole game by, you know, X, 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 and then dodge at the last second. Right. Uh, you know, you can hit the secondary and just mash on that if you just want to do that. The difference is, if you chain between these two buttons, let's say X, X, and then Y, you get a brand new move. It's called a crossover move. And it has additional functionality. It's, you know, a 360 swing. And you can do the same thing in reverse. If you do heavy and then you hit scythe, that's a whole new move. You can't mm. access it any other way. Um, and then from those, you have all new moves. So out of that, if I press Y again, I get a hilt strike, which does a ton of damage. And then out of that, I get the final hit. So I can go into that, which, which is the final hit of my uh, hammer combo. That's the final hit of my scythe combo. And you can do it in both ways, you know, in both directions. And this right now, what he's showing you, this is all, we have purchased no moves. We just yeah, started the game. The so this is all stuff that you kind of discover by playing or, you know, just yep. by mistake almost yep. while you're exactly. playing. Exactly. I mean, we wanted players to jump in here and, didn't, you know, not feel limited from the beginning. They can right. still do a lot of combos. Uh, one of the most important things is the way you can launch characters is that you can just hit jump at any time and you can, you know, cancel on yeah. time. I really loved using that when I was playing it, and it's just like, I, I really appreciate it too, like, you don't start the game and feel like, oh, I've just been stripped of all these cool abilities and now I have to regain them. It's like you start off as a kind of like a badass and then you just become more and more powerful. Yeah. It's like you feel that kind of immediately. Yeah. And the loot always helps in that too, because you're always advancing, getting new abilities through the loot, getting uh, certain, like, your strength or your arcane increase, so it's just like, yeah. Especially if you ever, like, have an old save. Say you're, like, 10 hours into the game, and then you go back to the beginning, you'll just be like, ugh, I'm only doing 50 damage. I'm like, God. Mm -hmm. All right, we got some questions from uh, some of our readers here. Hit us. Uh, Jaron Ellis wants to know if the big open worlds are returning for uh, Darksiders 2. Bigger. Like, uh, Bigger. Uh, again, I, it's hard to quantify just because, you, you know, I can say, like, we've always said that our first big zone, the one right after this, is bigger than the entire first game of Darksiders. Very true. That surface area, you know, so there's a lot of grounds to cover. And then within those open worlds, we hide, you know, hidden side quest adventures to find, even just chests, you know, that you have to figure out how to get and everything. And so 
yeah, I mean, comparatively, like, Darksiders 2 is... I can't put it to work. There are more <laughs> dungeons right. in the first zone than there are in the entire first game. There are more dungeons in the second zone than there are in the entire first game. And overall, it's just a huge, huge increase. There's actually more optional dungeons in Darksiders 2 than there is actual dungeons in the first Darksiders. Wow. So that's something to... So will you just stumble across these just as you're going? Yeah, to the some next are waypoint? some you have to kind of actively find. Other ones, you know, for example, you'll be riding on the main mission where you have to go, and you'll see a giant door you can't get into, mm-hmm. which is obviously like you'll be like, well, "What's that about?" And then you have to figure that out later on. But yeah, it's just uh, you're rewarded for exploring, but also just kind of the, sometimes we do the uh, obvious hints like, "Here's something you can't have." Sure. Try to find out how to get it. You know, I'd have to say one thing that kind of struck me too is when I was playing through and I went through some of those optional dungeons. Um, like they were always just as complex as some of the oh, yeah. main story dungeons. Like there was never, you know, when you play a lot of RPGs, sometimes you go into a side quest cave and it's like you run to the end of the hallway and you kill a guy and there's the side quest. Nope, now it's like a giant, expansive, like forty-five minute dungeon with all kinds of cool puzzles. Yeah, and that's yeah. Like just a side quest. You know, it's uh, it was really, really some well of the some thought. of the people on the team actually feel that some of the side dungeons, which again are completely optional, are some of the their favorite dungeons in the game. Yeah, like you can you can totally miss them. You can, I mean. If you talk to the NPCs, you'll find them, and if right. you explore, you'll find them. But you can—you don't have to do them either. Yeah. So I think so. I mean, I'm sure some people would say like, "Why are you putting so much optional <laughs> content into a game when you don't?" But it's just like, I, I want you to feel cool when you did yeah. it, you know? Or like, you know, two people finish the game, and one person says, "Oh, did you see that one dungeon where this happened?" And the other person's like, "What? I don't even know what you're talking about." And that's <laughs> yeah. that's cool, you know, when you yeah. can find something that nobody else found or doesn't know what you're talking yeah. about. Well, I mean, and also one of our principal designers, one of the founders of the company, actually. Uh, uh-huh. Said that it's not Ryan. Oh, okay. He said uh, it's. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, thank you. He said it's not optional content if you're forced to go through it. If it's yeah. part of the main story, then it's not optional content. There is, like I said, more optional dungeons in this game than there were in the entire first Dark Sider. So, I think people will really appreciate that. Cool. <laughs> so uh, Marco wants to know about the rep- replayability. So, will you jump back into the game once you've completed the game? Yeah, so we have, uh, once you complete the game, we have uh, New Game Plus. So, uh, you know, and it tells you right before you start, you, you know, say, like, you're about to finish the game. Do you want to go back and mm-hmm. finish what you've done or whatever else, or do you want to continue on so you know you can always go back and finish? And then, in addition to New Game Plus, there is Nightmare Mode Unlocked, which is the hardest difficulty, except you only get one. If you die in combat, that's it. Save, gone, you're dead. You can fall <laughs> off a ledge and you're all right, but yeah. Yeah. That's so like a hardcore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. That's and right. then we have another one. Like, um, I, it, I, if we have time, we'll show it to you guys. It's called a uh, Crucible mode, and that's kind of our combat challenge mode. After you finish the first zone, uh, you get a message in our tome system saying, "Come to my arena," and you go there. And it's wave after wave of combat getting progressively harder and harder. And every five levels, the combat master stops you and says, "You can take." this much random loot or do you want to bet it all and see if you can beat the next five waves Mm -hmm. and when you first get that I mean if you make it to level 15 because you'd be about average level 10 or 11 I'd say you're doing really well with having where you've learned combat so far so that kind of gives you an idea of the challenge well we purposely unlock it really really early Sure. You know, relative to what what level you are, you get like like Jay said about ten or eleven or something like that. But the enemies are tuned for about level fifteen, so it's going to be a challenge. You get past the first five, it feels, you know, pretty challenging. It's kind of hard, uh, and then you're kind of, you know, you you're, you're baited to take that loot and leave, but you know that you want to come back because there's so many better prizes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I will always make the mention that um, if you're on the fence about getting this game and you are thinking about it, because the limited edition, the one that comes with the, you get the free DLC, the mm-hmm. first DLC drop for free, like, just like a collection edition, those are gone. And the limited edition, for real, is limited. It's not like, you know, there's 20,000 extra sitting in a store. Sure. However, day after, like, <laughs> just like, because I always know that you get a, you buy a collection edition, you're like, eh, now they have a hundred of them left. Yeah, right, like, right. Whatever, who cares? This is like, for real. Like, if you, I don't know, if you're thinking about it and you want the DLC, I'd go for it. Cool. But of course, I work at Vigil Games, of course, I'd say that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, a couple of the guys are asking about the the PC version, and they want to know if there's like advanced graphics options and well, yeah, just, I mean, how, just, it, how it plays compared to like yeah. the console version. I don't know if we mentioned we're playing the PC version right now, just because so we can make jumps or saves that we already have invested. So uh, the console versions look great, but the PC version does look better. Obviously, yeah. the power of your rig determines how much better exactly true, yeah. and everything. And then we. Uh, 
you know, you can play with a controller on the PC, but if you're a keyboard and mouse guy, we're, we want to make sure you're, you don't feel like, I don't know, like we just threw it in just yeah, thing it stinks, you know, yeah, like right, it right. really is a good keyboard and mouse control. Um, I don't know to answer that question. Was there any other part to that? Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm freestyling here. It's pretty, it's pretty, it's good. Yeah, you can you can edit you can edit your own config and, and stuff, and you can definitely tweak it and make it look even better. Yeah, we're we're looking at the PC version, so you can decide if it's good enough for you or not. <laughs> <laughs> it's again, enough. Like Jay said it's you know it's based on the power of your rig as well, and you can turn stuff up as well. You will take it back in exchange for its secrets. You agreed to keep the amulet. No. The voices, they curse and threaten without end. They cry to return. You must destroy it. I cannot. You annihilated their flesh. Why do you guard their souls? Open the portal. You will not pass while I live. So be it. So the part I like about this is, you know, like you said, uh, you were asking before, like, what's the differences between playing war and playing death? Mm -hmm. And then, as you'll see, Crowfather turns into a version of war here. And this is kind of, for players of the first one, you know, I think right away you'd say, wow, this character's really different. It's different than war. And you might start thinking to yourself, how do they play differently? And then you get to basically fight war. And you can see what you've learned in this tutorial level actually in practice against right. the character you were playing in Darksiders 1. So you can, you, you can feel and visualize the differences between the two characters. The old chaos eater. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, sword. <laughs> oh, another thing too, like the music is just so good. Oh, dude, Jesper Kidd entire, killed it on that. Like yeah, that guy, he's a great he's composer, insane. man. Yeah. Because there are a lot of times where I was like, man, this this part is awesome in its own, but this music just like amplifies it. Yeah. So much. And I think because he did a ton of tracks too. Like the soundtrack yeah. is two CDs, yep. each oh, one over God. an hour. So yeah, I mean. And that's and there's more than that. He's, that's just the breakdown on it to uh, individual yeah, sure. tracks, you know. Yeah. So for sure, for the uh, audio files out there, you guys will love the soundtrack in this game. Yeah, I like how War has basically the same moves as he does yeah. mm -hmm. the original game, like just that, the smasher. Yeah. Move, right yeah, you remember that, like where you'd throw it down and the spikes would pop yeah, out yeah, all yeah, around yeah. you. Death Scythe too. It just it's kind of like that. You know, it morphs. It's constantly morphing. Its blades are getting smaller and bigger and splitting into two and becoming one. It's really awesome. Yeah, I think our animators had fun with that too because there's a you know why why you in our mode we have kind of a debug mode and you can make it go really slow like almost like quarter speed and you can see like even, there's even a point where Death like breaks the scythe in two, flips it, throws it in the air, catches it from behind, you know, but you would never see it full speed, but I was just like, the animators are just having a blast well, right is, now, like, doing ridiculous stuff. You can even tell that, like, in the dodge animations where he's doing these crazy, like, one-handed cart wheel flips, like, it's so cool. Looking. Right, yeah, like, they're just, like, having time with their lives making this stuff happen. Your secrets die with you. Michael Wincott. Mm-hmm. He's the man. <laughs> My secrets. But not yours. So what happens to him here? He gets the So what happened was, you know, the all the horsemen are from a race called the Nephilim, which were created by combining angel and demon, but the council and whoever decided they were too powerful. So the four horsemen, basically the agreement was, we'll let you live and you'll become very powerful, but we need you to commit genocide on your own race. So <laughs> they did that, but in that amulet was held all the souls of the remaining Nephilim. And so Back in the day, Death traded that to Crowfather because he's the keeper of secrets, so it had a lot of knowledge in it, but it was driving him crazy. So as kind of a final FU, the Crowfather was like, it shattered and hit Death. So now you'll see throughout the game he's being haunted by the voices of the race that he killed, right. taunting him throughout this game. But others linger for eternity on the brink of annihilation. That creation might be balanced with destruction. And in the final moment of battle, death 
was banished to one such world in the autumn of its life, yet not far from the edge of darkness. Had death been sent to his doom? That answer would be found in the horseman's future and in his past. Dun, dun, dun. <sighs> So, one thing I noticed about this game, too, is, uh, you know, whereas most of Darksiders, the original, took place on Earth, most of this game takes place on a variety of planets, right? Yeah, or, uh, what do you call it, the or underworld or various planes, or, yeah. And then, can you tell us a little bit about, uh, like, this particular one here? Yeah, so this is, is it called Maker's Realm? or what? I Yeah, it's pretty okay. much, yeah. We've changed names so many times on stuff, <laughs> sure. I can't remember what they're called, but, yeah, so this is, if you remember Ulthane from the first game, the Scottish guy, right. this is his race. Okay. So you see, like, these are all makers, and they're, they're the creators of everything, you know, a building to a planet to whatever, so, but this is kind of where you learn... The overarching story of the game, where there's a force called corruption that's taking over everything. It's like those yellow crystals we'll see. It's the black right here. You can see it forming the black kind of tentacles coming out of these creatures. And so the makers are a dying race that's uh, being destroyed by their own creations because it's being taken over by corruption. So when death shows up, I think the creator, you know, the makers are like, oh, okay, you're here to finish the job, and start. And he's like, oh, no, actually, I just need to get to this tree of life. Help me <laughs> out, man. So it's kind of that's how they get teamed up. But yeah, so this is the maker's realm. And I think, have you played through the whole game, or how far have you yeah. gotten? Okay, so I'm not trying not to spoil things for the audience, but we wanted to make sure each zone visually was very different. Like, you have that ice zone, then you come here, and this one's more natural, lush, uh, stone architecture. Yeah. Then the, uh, we'll jump ahead to another zone here in a little bit, and you can see that's kind of the, uh, almost what you'd expect out of a game with death. It's all skulls and dust and uh, giant bones coming out. And then, yeah, but each zone, we want it to be super visually distinct. I mean, I don't know, that's kind of like our whole game. We don't want you ever get bored, like if you're doing the same thing, keep mixing it, mixing it up and mixing it up, and we do so that with the uh, worlds too, where you feel like I'm in a new place, this is, yeah. new things are happening. Older than even the Chard Council. These hands... And these guys are the same race as the Blue thing yep. guy yep. from yep. the first game. That that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, like, if you didn't play Darksiders 1, you'd be like, oh, cool, wow, a race of Scottish giants are here. But then if you have, you're like, hey, I, I know who these guys are. You know, just callbacks that affect people who have played the first game. Right. Tell me. I must restore humanity to redeem war. Heaven and hell battle upon the shattered earth. All creation trembles. And at the center of it all, Stands your brother. And everybody's he voices in this are just so epic. Yeah, this is, uh, that maker there is James Cosmo from Game of Thrones. What's yep. he play? What'd you say? Uh, Mormont. Mormont? Uh, Mormont. Yeah, I can't remember the pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you, <laughs> you see him, you're like, you're like, oh, that guy. Yeah. Oh, the guy that's on the wall. Uh, yeah, the wall. Yeah, exactly. Wall, yeah. exactly. The, the commander. He's been in Braveheart. He's been a bunch of other movies like that. The commander of the black. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> So I was thinking, we'll jump ahead to that abyssal plane thing we were talking about. Show them the town, or not? yeah. Uh, I don't know. You guys want to see the town, like a hub town? Yeah, yeah. Let's check out. The All right, we'll go ahead to the hub town. We'll jump ahead. Okay. Well, since we just leveled up, can we take a look at the maybe the skills? We sure skill can. Yeah, heck yeah. So you got your first skill point. Um, when we jump ahead, I think we'll have skill points to spend, yep. so we can kind of explore this more. But so you can see, you got your two skill trees: harbinger, necromancer. Harbinger is more the warrior track. Necromancer's spellcaster track. So. You get one for going up a level. You also get one at uh, completing random missions and, and doing certain things. Um, I don't know. First playthrough, how many skill points you're gonna get? Uh, Twenty-five, thirty. No, I think you get. Well, you get one per level, and then you can definitely get. I think it's either five or ten per per playthrough. Five or ten additional. Okay. And so here you can see us. We can map it to any button we want. So he just bought that ability. Yeah. So now I have teleport slash. So I can just you know cancel out of my any of my moves right into teleport slash. That's pretty cool, pretty handy. Now, one thing I noticed, because I played through probably like a good chunk of the game using it initially just the like the melee centric tree, and then I uh, ended up switching over to try out try out some of the magic stuff. And it's not so much like spell casting where you're sitting there and pressing a button sure. and shooting spells out of your hands, right? It's like you can summon ghoul things that kind of help you fight or or damage over time spells. That's like stuff that you use and then don't have to worry about it again. It's not like you yeah, they're like to... active abilities. Exactly. You send them out and they do their thing. Either they heal you or they take the focus right. of an enemy off you or you know stun them in place or whatever they sure. do. I mean, because I think yeah, like even though this is a 
those are spells, quote unquote. Yeah. I feel that's like, I mean, at heart, we're still a combat game. Exactly. You want it to make exactly. it combat centric, no matter what it is. And then, did you ever respec yeah. your character? Yeah, I did. Which that's always cool because I, you know, some of those skill trees don't even start till level eight. You right. know, you don't have to be level one and go all the way down. You could start picking up a new skill tree branch at level eight or level twelve and stuff. So when you respec, sure. you can kind of skip teleport slash or exhume yep. all those yeah. starter skills and jump right to the lo- yeah, higher exactly. level ones. You, you can see the number to the left of the uh, the skills here, and that basically says. You need to be this level to access what's on this tier. But if there's obviously a link in between, you need to buy the at least put sure. one point, you know, in uh, into the skill above. Well, for a lot of those skills, you can just purchase outright without de- you know without uh, committing to either tree fully. So it's yeah. kind of cool because like you know at level ten or something, I can have access to any of the spells yep. you know that are available at that level. Yeah, it's very powerful to go through the game, come back later with tons of skill points, respect, and buy stuff at the bottom of the tree too. You can yeah. totally do that. That means less now than once it did. This is a maker's forge. So at this point, you could already notice that there's a ton more characters than, oh, yeah. uh, than oh, yeah. War runs into. Dude, I always joke about that in the first game. War talked to four people and killed yeah. three of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's very true. I mean, and then, and then we have the conversation trees and this right. thing. You know, you get the basic story. You want to dig deeper, you can go down in the conversation trees, and that's where a lot of the side quests come from, from talking to NPCs. Well, there's definitely NPCs and creatures that you've seen. You know that that you don't even have to talk to. You can, you can get side quests, right? Give you all kind of new missions and rewards and things like that that you can't get anywhere else. Both imbued our craft with incredible power, the heart and the soul of stone, but corruption has taken them, and now our forge is silent. Why does this concern me? The way to the tree is lost, barred by corruption. You can no more leave this place than we. Restore our forge, and the tree can be reached. I don't follow your reasoning. We are makers, not warriors. But we are not without our weapons. Before the forge was lost, we crafted a mighty creature of soul and stone. A colossus to fight this corruption. But to awaken him requires a maker's key, and we need our forge to craft one. So we can talk to him, or we can just leave. Yeah. Uh, so we already have the quest, but uh, I guess you want to warp ahead? Yeah, you guys want to jump sure. ahead? Yeah. yeah, let's do it. Spoiler alert. <gasps> All right. Let's do it. You going to do the beatbox? No. Come <laughs> <laughs> on, man. That's only on a... Uh, all right, which one are we going to? Awkward. Now, wouldn't you have rather a beatbox? Yeah, time? I don't know. I'd rather just get another job. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He loves beatboxing. Just kidding. Come on. Stay with us, guys. All right, we're good to go. Here we go. By the way, like the screen in. wipe that on that. That was pretty cool. It was yeah. like some Star Wars stuff. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, so. So, yeah, now, so now like I was saying, this is the the next zone after the one we just were in. Uh-huh. And you can see it's very visually distinct. We're talking like it's, you know, all skulls and desolation everywhere. And then now we have a lot more skill points to spend, so you can kind of see how it breaks down. Yeah. Oh, do, uh, do we got possessed weapons? On this, I can't uh, remember. Let us take a look. Yeah. No possessed. No possessed. Okay. Maybe we'll find one on the way. Bummer. Yeah. It's a bummer. Yeah, you can always get lucky. It's true. Well, one thing that's really cool, too, uh, you know, there is quite a bit of a, a gear that drops, but every single piece that you equip looks pretty distinctly yep. different from everything else. I was kind of surprised at just how much variation there was. And it shows yeah. up in all the cutscenes. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. not just, so you know. Yeah. That's why we can't have that. Well, why we didn't have CG cutscenes in this, because, you know, you couldn't have had the equipment right. you're wearing, so it wouldn't seem like it was your character if it was right. CG. It was really cool, because a lot of that stuff looks awesome. I've done that, too, where you get a cool piece of equipment, and it's not that good anymore, but you're like, man, but I look so cool. <laughs> I, I know, know. Like, I know. Well, one of the things is, is, you know, if you kind of out-level your gear, you can always feed it to the next possessed weapon, which is cool. Right. Or feed a possessed weapon to a possessed weapon, because it's kind of, you know, outlived its worth. And so mm-hmm. possessed weapons are ones in which you can essentially level up, right? Exactly, you can level them By up. By sacrificing up to gear to it. Yep. And they gain new stats as they level up. And they those... basically gain the stats of the, the items that you fed to right. it, and you get to choose. Yeah, but if you want it, you can always, uh, you know, kind of exploit that by, you know, instead of just feeding it whatever you got, go to a vendor, sell something yep. with a specific ability you're looking for. Oh, yeah. And then feed it that and then put it up levels that way. So you can always, you can advance the weapon exactly how you want if you're just patient with it. 
and we're gonna have a lot more advanced moves now because we were just starting at level one or two. Now I'm thinking you're level 14, or do you know? Uh, so we'll take a look at that. A lot of skill points must be high up there, but yeah, we're gonna have some. The damage will be a lot higher. A lot more moves going on. So you guys have the death. It's death grip, right? Yeah, death yeah. grip. Uh, can you just talk about that ability a little bit? So it starts off as kind of a, a puzzle solving element, um, kind of a zip line. Sorry. Yeah, like where a grappling hook or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and and this is you know classic where even out in the open world, if before you have it, you'll see spots and you can't get to it. But then you get that and you're like, and you're like, oh, there was that hook, yep. and now I can use this to get across. But in addition to solving puzzles, you can use it in combat, like small guys pulls them towards you and trips them up like that big guys it'll pull you towards them but either right. way it's, it helps you close the gap faster on guys helps you get those aerial combos too right? yeah yeah exactly yeah. and then you saw uh, Ben just did an execution by pushing the B button and so yeah. execution that's an ability too now you'll see like certain weapons will have execution chance percentage so um, whereas before it happened all the time in Dark Souls 1 based on once you got the enemy down to a certain level of health. Right, At right. this point, you don't have to take them down as low. It's all about what your execution chance ability is. Uh, a couple guys on the chat want to know a little bit more about the weapons, what kind of uh, weapon types will be available. And... Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I just give us a second after this fight. We'll go into the, uh, the inventory menu and just kind of do a little uh, a parade of weaponry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're just taunting them now. <laughs> Alright, let's see what we got here. Uh-oh. Oh, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Tormentor. Yep. Looks like he was the one that was tormented. That guy has a serious arm problem. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> it doesn't help that he stuck hooks in it, I'll tell you that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he went to WebMD. <laughs> 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 I don't know what Giant growth on my arm. Yeah. Stick a hook in it. Thanks, Yahoo Answers. Looks oh, like a tumor. Yeah, exactly. And that's not a tumor. It's not a tumor. <laughs> that's Strife's pistol, is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. it's Strife's other pistol. And I think it, it did it before, and it might happen again, where you see this guy starts on fire, and that's an ability of the weapon you're using. has the uh, flame damage, so it'll start your enemy on fire every so often. Got him. Nice. And we got some uh, little loot pinata going on here. So let's see a different model. Yep, totally different model. Yeah. That's the uh, blue shell from Super Mario Kart. Or Mario Kart. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's lit on. You only overhead. get it if you're in uh, last place. Some of the guys on the chat are asking about uh, armor types too. So. Well, there's uh, three main distinct sets that are Slayer, Necromancer, and what Wanderer. Wanderer. Those yeah. are the basic sets. And, you know, one is focused towards melee, one is focused towards magic, and one is right down the center. And that's not to say that that's exclusively what it is. That's just yeah. kind of where its abilities exactly. lean towards exactly. out of those ability types. Like, I switched, switched to a different secondary weapon just to say, like, because what we're using before, hammer. hammer. Yeah. So uh, I love hammer. Yeah, here's some other ones. You know, Let's so there's see, um, basically two types, heavy and light. Heavy would be mace, hammer, polearm, pole, lights, claws, tonfas. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, you can see it, it hits. The light weapons hit a lot faster but do less damage. But if you look on the right uh, in the stats section, it'll show, yeah, where it shows, like, DPS. So yep, even right. though, what, like, it does less damage than the heavy weapon it's showing you, but technically you do more damage on average from yep. the speed of the weapon. Right. Crazy, crazy weapons here. <laughs> that's bigger than he is. Yeah, yeah. Got a buckler there. Yeah, that's oh. just so cool. Looking. Do some dress up on the armor, too, see if we got just some different armor types. It's an action figure, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Let's does, see what we got. Does the abyssal armor come back? Uh, I yes. A bunch of people asking it about that. It does come back. It's already been announced. Right. Hayden uh, Dalton, our lead designer, spoiled that. Uh, no, yeah. I'm just kidding. No, it definitely comes back, but to get it, it's actually way harder than in the first game, but it's also way better, so... Yeah, it's more worth it then. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And if you have a save from the first Darksiders, you will get a bonus in Darksiders 2. Ooh, one for having pretty much just earned any achievement and one for having finished the game. Oh, awesome. cool. Yep. So play Darksiders 1, guys. It's the best Dark demo of Darksiders. If you're wondering, well, you like Darksiders 2, <laughs> play Darksiders 1. That's the best tip I can give you. Oh, and so in this dungeon, one of the things we have now is uh, 
Oh, what's it even called? What's this one? Dead Lords? Or what yeah, but what's the item called that summons them? Oh, the Interdictor Stone? Yeah, yeah. So it summons these guys called Dead Lords that are this dungeon's puzzle solving element. Yep. Yep, so right now you only have one. one. Later on you'll get a second one and then have to use two of these guys exactly. at once. So but they can uh, they can be used in combat too. Like if you summon them around and they're in a combat, he'll uh, help you take care of biz on guys. Yeah. So and it looks I, like they step on panels and yep. yeah. you help you open doors. You direct them towards levers or whatever you need them to do. And they can walk through uh, bars. Possibly. There was a joke there somewhere. <laughs> they can walk through bars. <laughs> a dead lord walks into a bar. <laughs> There is a joke in there somewhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, you can tell them. I mean, we, there's things in this dungeon that actually erase. I don't know what the actual term is. We call them erasers. But when you walk over the bar on the ground, they'll actually disappear. Then you have to summon right. them on other side. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know if we actually have an actual term for that. Eraser sounds good. Eraser. Yeah. <laughs> I like that, that part where fantasy. the crocodiles came out of the, the thing and the whole <laughs> hotel is filled with water. <laughs> Oops. And I love how quick too the uh, just the platforming is in, is in this game. Like it, it's like you don't have to waste your time waiting for slow animations as you're yeah. climbing up this building or anything. It's just like all so fast. The wall running, the climbing, and it kind of makes it feel dangerous or more yeah, imminent. Like you does. have to pay attention. You have to be active. Right. Otherwise, you're not like you say. You can't just be like hit jump and then kind of wander away. You have to be like. And yeah. then something happened, and then you have to like be active within it the whole time. Because you know, it's like I love climbing buildings and stuff in Assassin's Creed, but it also takes me ten minutes to get to the top of a tower. Right, right. right it's yeah, like, it's not the case here. Oh yeah, so now he's using the light secondary weapon. You can see how much faster well, those are so comparatively. Much and the good thing about those executions when you get the B button is you're invulnerable while you're doing those. So they can be kind of a lifesaver if you can't dodge out of the way, but you see a guy near your right. B, you can kind of hit that so you know like the guy about to strike and it won't affect you. Nice. <laughs> Jeff does not care. <laughs> he's not here to make friends. He's, yeah. he's a no nonsense kind of guy. Exactly. exactly. Didn't you know what my name is? <laughs> it's Clarence. <laughs> and I love how the eyes light up on those skulls on the door. Yeah, oh, yeah. so you get cool. close. Yeah. Like what's ah. going on? Yeah, that's way. That's way cool. <laughs> Oh, juggle. Good one, yeah. Jeez. Never even had a chance. Yeah. Yep. Don't try that at home, kids. So I, say, it's and that, I say, Ben, this is pretty good for only your first time playing. I know. <laughs> yeah, man. It's the harbinger of, uh, of, a, of death, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I hate dogs. I hate dogs. No, thank you, John Cusick. All right, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Must not love dogs. All right, here we go. All right, he's dead. Let us get a key. I like how the phantom arms just come out of nowhere. That doesn't do manual labor. He just yeah, yeah. it's the arrogance just of him, you know. Things. Make, yeah. his, make his arms do all the work. <laughs> Let's see. Wait, do we have the uh, the bite stone? Let's take a look. Do we have it? No, I don't think we. No, do we don't have it. Yeah, oh, we don't have do that. It. There's this side mission where you'll see these little colored stones sort of thing, and you have to meet the Here's dude's one name here. I never can remember. Volcrum? No, no, no. Uh, See these stones right here? There's tons of these uh, around the world. Yeah, yeah. You just yeah. shoot them, right? Black root. Black root, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, you just shoot them, uh, but we don't have the item from Black Root yet. It's very easy oh. to get you obtain it early in the game. But when you see these around the world, they're hidden everywhere, like in the hands of, you know, skeletons or they'll be up in the world. And there's three colors, red, blue, and yellow. And when you get any three colors, you can turn them back into Black Root for a permanent stat upgrade. And it'll carry across New Game Plus oh, wow. or whatever. So, and it depends on the combination. You can do three reds, you can do two reds and a blue, two reds and a yellow, two blues and a, you know, a red, whatever. And, uh, you know, once you find out the combinations that you really like, you can... You Pump know, up that you, stat or yeah. that ability or whatever. And it's, you want like to I said, it's permanent, so you can get some huge, huge upgrades. You know, that's one thing I forgot to do, is to go back to him after I destroyed, yep. like, a bunch of those things. Yeah, and then there's also the relics. You'll, you'll find the relics, right. are, you know, hidden around the, the world as well. So, uh, and they also do similar things. You can get more skill points, you can get permanent health upgrades. Um, all kinds of little things like that, and again, none of it is is required. Oh, that guy's that guy is fired. Mm -hmm. So do those uh, stat bonuses tra uh, transfer over to uh, new game? Yes, they do. Yep. Absolutely, awesome. they're super powerful. So one, you know, very good strategy is to 100% the game the first time, 
uh, in, in terms of all the content that's available in the first game, uh, first playthrough, and uh, superpower your guy up, and then go into the next game and play on apocalyptic if that's what you want, because yeah. your guy's you know so much stronger. Yeah, because that kind of gives you you know you have to really think through everything you're doing. Yep. Oh, am I going the wrong way? Mm -hmm. Skeleton key it. Oh, what am I thinking, dude? I've never played this game before. No, no, I'm, but I'm just telling you, it's the first time I'm forgiven of you, man. Keep forgetting. I just want to, like, punch more people in the face. Yeah, yeah. Where why, are they? why did I warp out? But yeah, there's lots of, uh... Actually, I think there's a secret in here, too. Like, if you look at these things, these are, uh... What do we call them? Arbiters Arbiter maze? scrolls. Arbiter yeah. scrolls, yeah, and you... You look for these uh, things. Yeah, anytime you see one of these, it's kind of like in Gears of War, you see... You know, the symbol that means the cog is there. In our case, it's, you know, a uh, um, scroll is around. And those scrolls help you in an another completely optional dungeon. That will completely drive you nuts if you yeah. don't have <laughs> If you don't have the directions. Yeah. Yeah. I was missing one. I couldn't. Yeah, yeah it's like if you don't have them all, don't go, man. It'll drive you bananas, that dungeon. <laughs> is it possible to go through it without it? I suppose. Yeah, I mean, you can, uh, you can It's also a... possible to win the lottery, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. You could get a guide, but uh, Arbiter's Maze is pretty uh, ruthless. Yeah. Yep. I would I would have never been able to figure it out without the scrolls, so. Well, that's the thing, and, and there's scrolls to show you how to get through it, but there's also a secret uh, direction uh, to go in every one of those as well, and you can get some really cool loot that way. What's funny is that's so secret, I didn't even know that until you just said oh. it just now, for real. <laughs> <laughs> I found some of those. That's why they bring me along. Yeah. Right? yeah. Right. I always like how this look up here. Look yeah, this looks so cool. Bright sunny day in the abyssal plains. Something's gonna go down. It's too quiet. It's like a horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's just a dude in a cage. What's <laughs> yeah, up, exactly. man? Well, that guy is. I don't know. Like, I just want to know how. Like, if they had to. I mean, he's a spirit. I'm guessing, but if they had to physically carry him up there, that probably would have been not very fun. No, we no. Put him in there. Well, the other thing about this whole realm is like, you know, the the apocalypse just happened with however many billion people just had, you know. But right. yet, they're still processing everybody one at a time. Yeah. Like, there's no no rush. You know, no rush. Same old exactly. jobs, everybody. I get paid the same no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. Death that. is eternity. So. Yeah, exactly. Now this oh, that rage. this, this game is happening in conjunction with the events of the first. Yep. Is that right? Okay. In the time that War is imprisoned by the Chard Council for his hundred years, okay. that's why I, that's where Death is trying to clear his okay. name. But yeah, it's so roughly in parallel. So if you ever get tired of fighting these these guys and you uh, have full Reaper meter, you can just cancel out of everything and turn into his ultimate form and just. <laughs> Spray the area. Yeah. It's hard. Like, I mean, you barely get hurt while you're in this forearm. You're doing tons of damage. It doesn't last too long, but... Yeah. Those guys are all... Bad. Yeah. Toasted. Yep. Andy, why you got it? I played this before. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that was your first time what happened here. I played it once earlier before oh, okay. breakfast. <laughs> I would not recommend playing Dark Siders 2 before breakfast, taking a lot of carbs. You know what I mean? It's the most important meal of the day, Ben. You know it is, mean? it is. Yeah. But uh, you know, definitely break everything as well. Yeah. You can you can actually get good loot out of yeah. just random stuff that you break. It's not a high chance, but it's a chance and it's easy to break stuff, so. Yeah. But yeah. Bridge of Doom here. You wanna go to the next one? We can go through the next one if I have returned the soul over. to the homeboy and then uh you want to do some Crucible? Show that is his official name, by the way. Yeah, homeboy. <laughs> homeboy. <laughs> his name is Papa Doc. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be a rap battle at the end of this level. Yeah. I sure hope so. I'd be yeah. disappointed if there weren't. <laughs> MC Death and Papa. Yeah, yeah. Papa Rock here. <laughs> Him and Death should get along. They look about the right, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Judgment. Awesome. Well, what's what do we look on look like on time? Yeah, how much time we got, boys? Because we can show one more tower, we can show some crucible, we can. World's our oyster right here. We can go as long as we want. To Is go. crucible open right now? Check the mini map. See if we got a. Let us check the mini. Let map. us check the mini map. Death is like Magellan. I was a big fan of the fast travel in this game too. Oh, it's not open. Ooh, no crucible open yet. Well, uh, we could probably go to the tome and pick it up. It's probably. Oh yeah. Us. Okay. We'll, we'll take a look after this. Let's do this one more tower. Unless you don't want to. Yeah. Unless you don't want to be cool <laughs> to our fans, Jay Fitzloff. Just such a fan of the Crucible. I wish I had designed it. I am a fan of the Crucible. <laughs> I have designed it. the Crucible. I've played it many, <laughs> many an hour. 
I will personally congratulate you if you can beat it on apocalyptic difficulty. Personally? Personally. Not in person. Oh. I just sent you an email. Card like, or something like that? <laughs> Dude, really? Yeah, I heard you beat a good job. I just wanted yeah. to. <laughs> yeah. Dear Jay, good job, Ben. Good job. <laughs> you are in my heart. <laughs> So he said, I heard it's your birthday crossed out. Good job beating the crucible. <laughs> <laughs> Get well soon. Get well soon. <laughs> this guy is... I hate this guy. Yeah. Look There's that, that shield that makes him a pain, man. Yeah, he does that a lot. He tends to block. But it's good. You gotta... Our friends are in there, yeah. Yeah. He'll help distract him. Out of wrath. Look at this guy. Sounded cool hitting that shield. Did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, our sound guys did an amazing job. And our yeah. effects guys. They're kind of like the unsung heroes of the team. They That's true though, man, because it's all the it's the it's the uh the creamy sauce of this meal, you know? Yeah, I mean they've we've gotten a lot of effects or a lot of um uh what's the word? I guess acclaim or or, or uh, regards for our effects and our sounds and those guys kick ass and they don't, you know, get a lot of exposure, but yeah. Man, they, they make everything just look and sound amazing. Uh, and like, and like we, you talked about earlier, too, there's just so many subtle things. Like, I mean, if you just look at all the electricity and sparks flying off that guy's yeah. shield, it's like oh, yeah. so cool. Exactly. They have to keep it under budget and all that stuff. Yeah, and all yeah. those sw souls swirling around after you hit him. Yep. Yeah. And this is one of those games, too. And I, you know, again, I think I've played this game about a million times so far, but I still catch myself going through the world and just looking at stuff. Where I'll yeah. see like a vista or something, and be like, "Oh man, look at this thing!" So those are corrupt corruption. Yeah, crystals. that's the corruption crystal. It's taking over everything. We just keep getting in our way. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we got here. And you too will learn to hate corruption. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what we got here. But luckily, we have our uh, handy dandy dead lord, Clarence. It's <laughs> <laughs> gonna help us out. Let's see what we got. Oops, that is not where I wanted to go. Luckily, I should hold left instead of up. Come up here. I really like how he, the animation when he's crawling around and everything, it lo just looks like an undead, oh, yeah, guys, like yeah. creepy crawler guy like. from like the mummy movie or something. And I keep thinking when he's doing his wall roads, like, man, I, I just like picture or, or hear the sound of nails on a chalkboard whenever that's happening. It's just like, oh, right, uh, with his claws. Yo. Lots of cool traversal uh, sequences in this game. Yeah. Pick it up manually. Mm -hmm. Death. I don't care. A couple of guys on the chat are uh, asking about the colored items. Like, it is it classified by oh, how, the like, loot a, colors. A MMO? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, we, we purposely used the went with the standards. At first, we were going to try to reinvent the wheel and be, you know, our crap items are orange and our this items are whatever color. And then we're like, that doesn't just doesn't feel right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Certain things you don't need to reinvent. Yeah. So it goes like purples are the epic ones. Or exactly. Orange are the customizable possessed yep. weapons. Yep. Pretty standard. Uh, you know, no border is common. And typically, they only have one stat on them. Enchanted has, uh, actually, Enchanted has one stat. Common has nothing. Um, and what do we have? Rare, which has two stats. As you can see, this only has two stats. Epic or Elite, whatever we call them, is three. <laughs> and then, yeah, Possess Weapons and Legendary Weapons have, well, Possess Weapons can have up to four customized by you. They can right. be anything you want. And um, the Legendaries have New Game Plus, beating some of the early monsters in New Game Plus. Hmm. Um, yeah, there's some... Some pretty cool stuff. Another and there's something for everybody. So this doesn't look uh, beneficial. See, there's another one of these things. You gotta keep your eye out, they're everywhere. Yeah. And your ears open. Yep. You hear yeah, yeah exactly. you do hear them, yep. I never noticed that until just now. He's skeleton. Oh no. What is he doing? The yeah. Bone Keeper. It's my nickname in high school. So, <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's kill this guy. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't say that. It's on the internet. 
It's, I'm done I read for. it on the internet somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Whoa. See, I love the heavy weapons, but a lot of people love the, um, you know, the claw weapons. All the different effects. Like, these things hit really, really hard. The thing about the claw weapon is you can uh, dodge cancel out of almost any any frame of, you know, yeah. the attacks. Like, uh, see. You just have to be quick with them, because they do do ridiculous damage. And then the secondary weapons can usually have, like, they usually have charge attacks, right? Yeah, all of the secondary weapons have unique charge charge attacks, so, like, you'll do Gauntlet, for example, will have, you know, oh, man, oh. that guy's whole family just died. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to that guy? <laughs> Mr. Skellington over there. Yeah. But, yeah, the thing is, like, I'm so used to fighting out at a distance that these guys are just murdering me, but some people get really good with the claws and just, you know, eviscerate some of these guys. If you ever see the, the B prompt for execution, you can cancel out of almost any frame of any ability. And it's great because, like Jay said, you know, when you're in the Crucible or you're in Apocalyptic, you can use that as a yeah. short... Canceling suddenly becomes a lot exactly. more important. Yeah. So I probably should kill this guy that keeps summoning. Yeah, I don't know if you saw Yeah, but you can see, like, that's the guy with the health bar. You can see yeah, this exactly. skeleton hung from the chain, so that's kind of the trick of this level is figuring that out. Do you guys have a preference for the secondaries? Like, you go I think we're both the, heavy, the pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I say, like, it was funny. Even within the heavy weapons, I, like, um, if I know I'm going to fight just one boss like this guy without any minions, my favorite one is the pole arm because that just does its power is you know a power attack is just a straight spear right yeah. into the guy which does does a ton of damage, and I like that better than the the hammer and animation because those you can get caught in those easier right. Right. Oh, see, Ooh. that one you cannot cancel out of because you're in the air. Oh, it's gonna hurt. No, we're already. But a funny thing, I think you were saying at Vigil, it seems like claws are all of a sudden, and not when I say all of a sudden, I mean like recently all of a sudden claws became the yeah. weapon du jour. I don't know if that means people discovered <laughs> a new ways they're to They're just exploit. amazing. Like there's, yeah, right. They do crazy damage. But, uh, you know, with the heavy, you can kind of like one, two, go into the crossover, uh, and, it, and it swings kind of around you. The difference with the melee up close is it focuses on the guy right in front of him. Right? Yeah. So the guy right in front of him is just going to get obliterated. Ooh, super upgrade. Ooh, good stuff. That's, That's a huge, huge upgrade. Yeah. You see, I'm telling you, we've played this game hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of times, but you see a purple, you don't know what it's going to be, you get excited. Yeah. Especially when you can't pick yeah, it up. Yeah, and then you're like, Because wow. you're, <laughs> you're full on in your inventory, but yeah. Luckily, you can fast travel out, sell it, and fast travel right back. Exactly. exactly. Or feed it, you know, keep a possessed weapon, uh, you know, on you, and... Yeah, that's true. Even if you had a... Like, if you got two possessed weapons... And you know, one's your go-to possessed yeah. weapon, and the other one, you can just that can be your inventory dump to later feed to another possessed weapon, or yep. it's almost like your sure. banking system yeah. for uh, weapon experience. Now, can we go to the? Uh, you tell me. I'm dying. I'm dying well, to let's go to uh, let's go to a tome and see what we got. Yeah, this is a debug save. Now, can we hear the beatboxing? No, <laughs> you Man, cannot. I'm telling you, dude. But we have second career. We can show some other stuff here. Let's see, um, oh yeah, we have we're full on pretty much everything, but that the gauntlets have a big double strike. We have the buckler, which you can actually block. Yeah, that's the oh, one cool. place yeah. you can block if you have bucklers. Oh. Yeah, some people did not know that, uh, and we, you know, purposely said you cannot block in this game, and you couldn't until we decided to make the buckler a shield. And you can tell when you have a buckler. First of all, it says buckler, but <laughs> <laughs> the uh, you know his left arm always has the huge gauntlet on it, and, and his right arm just has. You know, usually almost nothing. Yeah. The cool thing about the buckler is that um, you can cancel a lot of stuff with the buckler and keep going right into, you know, additional attacks if you want. So, so does the blocking affect your dodging ability? Well, I mean, if you're in this, you can still dodge out of it if you're holding this button down. Mm -hmm. But the way this one works, typically when you charge an attack in our game, uh, you know, you see the circle, the purple circle that comes around you, and you release it at the right time, and you do a powerful version of the attack. Well, that doesn't work with this. What happens is when you get hit when you're using the, uh, the buckler, then the circle comes, and if you release it at the right time, you do a huge Bruce Lee-looking... Counter? <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. much. Pretty much. It is very uh, Bruce Lee-ish. Let's go turn this last one in, and then we'll see what we got. Oh, yeah, we're in. I'd hate to leave uh, exactly. Clarence hanging. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See what he says. Judgment is at hand. Would you like to play a game? 
Do you like baseball? Do you John? like baseball? Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about cricket? <laughs> it's the gentleman's sport. So frightened. How about pro wrestling? As you truly live. That's badass. It is finished. Your lord summons you. I would do almost anything Michael Wincott told me oh, to do. Yeah. His <laughs> pretty voice. Eat this extra slice of cake. Right. <laughs> yes, Michael Wincott. Yeah, okay. But I'm so full. Mm. Too bad. Too bad. Oh, man. But I am a lord of the dead. This jerk. This guy dude. demands an audience. This realm belongs to corruption now. None alive can stand against it. You misjudge me. You ride without the power of the seals at your back. You would not survive even the weakest trial. How does he see out of that visor? <laughs> he doesn't. It's got holes, yeah. It's got an LCD in there. <laughs> Game. <laughs> I'm watching Avengers on the other half yeah, right now. Exactly. It's virtual reality. Yeah. But in my helmet, it looks like a, a 50 foot screen. It's badass, man. If you live, we will speak again. If I live. Completed. Let's see what we got on our mini map. So, we could go to the. Go to the Mel Tome? Let's do it. The Mel Tome? Huh? The Velvet Fog over here? Yeah. I'm going to go to the Frank Sinatra. Yeah, let's do that, too. Yeah. Let's make the rounds. I don't understand this guy. Lemon Who is this guy? Rang. All right, so here's the Eternal Throne. Spoiler alert. Don't, I'm going to look down. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so go to our tome and see if we have the uh, the Crucible Yeah, the invitation note from our man. Yep. It's a mailbox. Because why not? What other like kind of things can you do with the tome? Um, well, you can trade items there. between friends too. So you know, if you got your uh, Xbox Live or whatever there, and you say like, like for example, you found two possessed weapons, and you're like, I got an extra one. Send your friend a message, mail it on over to him. There you go. You can, I think it was it five items per. Yeah, something message. something like that. <clears throat> and then it's also like uh, if you uh, got any items through DLC or stuff like that, it's like that. Or sure. in this case, uh, the invitation to the Crucible. Which and I don't and don't quote me on this, but I believe you can actually send anything. I think you can send a legendary if you want. If you oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yourself, your friend a legend. So now you can see the Crucible is unlocked. This is unlocked on every map, uh, and just go in there and uh, start swinging. head on over. Yeah. Let's see what we got. Actually, I'm going to go heavy for this. Let's see. So for those who joined us late, what is the Crucible again? Go for it, Jay. Yeah. I feel, I feel weird describing it since I'm sitting next to the guy that designed the Crucible, right, but here we go. It. All right. Now you're trying to come around. <laughs> so it's a wave after wave combat challenge because we wanted a way to, like, you know, it's a reward for you having learned how to do combat really well, but it's also a mode you can always go into and always uh, test your skills and go on, and you unlock it when you're about level... 11, yeah, yeah, 10 to 12 or so, depending on uh, how much you ground to get to it. But uh, it's, I would highly, highly doubt anyone on their, if you were to visit it right away when it become unlocked, I don't even think you could make it past level 25. I think that would I be doubt a I mean, huge accomplishment. Some people could. some people will be able to do it. Uh, and we've had people internally that have played the Crucible amount a thousand times that you know can do it. But right. typically when you first come in and you're not prepared and you don't have the right build right. to get through it, it's... <laughs> We've seen people have trouble with the first five levels, but you're only a level 11, and they're tuned for level 15 or higher. Right. So, right. but we want you to come in and look at it and say, Let "What is this place?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's what Let him do. tell you. The more creatures you defeat, the deeper into the crucible you'll go. At intervals, you'll be offered a reward. If you take the reward, you must exit. If not, you may continue. But if at any time you fall, you will earn nothing. Oh, that's kind of rude. Oh, yeah. and one last thing. No one has ever finished the Crucible besides me. You know, this guy was all right until he had, to, like, oh, one more thing. <laughs> <a> one more <laughs> thing. You had to tell me that. Exactly. He's kind of trolling us. Yeah, it looks like, like a nice chat until he was Right, like, yeah, it was cool. No it kind of looks more. like a, an Aztec transformer. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the Aztecs had transformers, too? I guess so. So, yeah, so you get these combat waves, and you can see wave one starting. And then every five levels, uh, Cargon, the guy that runs it, will come down and say, take the reward or kind of game show style, want to keep risking it. And the reward gets 
greater and greater. And then at certain intervals, he also just oh. gives you an item as a reward for completing certain certain benchmarks within the Crucible. So how far does it actually go? It has, as I like to say, 100? <laughs> <laughs> Question mark? Maybe more? <laughs> Super spoiler. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just kidding. Here's the, here's the super spoiler. Where are these screaming fans at? Dude, it's a ghostly forgotten arena. Oh yeah, okay. We're in the third season of Spartacus. <laughs> I thought it was filled with ninja waffles out here or something. Oh, ninja waffles. I hope he's watching. Yeah, yo, ninja waffles. What up, oh, dude? Okay. Oh, see, you gotta have meteor strike. It's pretty much the best thing ever. Blow him down. Oh no, I don't think so. And this is the one case too, you know, a lot of times you're in a dungeon, you're running low on health potions, you can fast travel to a town, pick up health potions. This one you can get, so I'd start with five and that's all you're gonna get that's for all as long as you yeah. can run for. Yep. Oh, for the fences. Nice one. Oh! Last second. That guy's gonna pay. So can you run through this after your first playthrough or during the first playthrough? Is it you cannot get to the end on your first that? playthrough. You can get almost all the way through. Uh, you need to be level 25 to get the last 25 floors unlocked. Ah. And it's very easy to get to 25. It's New Game Plus for just a few few areas. Very, very simple. Well, it actually depends if how much side content, to, you know, content you've done. Mm -hmm. But we don't force you to play through the whole game again. Sure. We just want you to see a little bit of New Game Plus. And again, you'll get uh, some of that legendary loot unique to New Game Plus only on your way to 25, which is oh, really cool. cool. Wait, is like 25 like a cap or anything like that? No, no, no. That's not the cap. Okay. 30 is actually the cap. Okay. But we, you know, we wanted you to see a little bit, like I said. Oh, ho, ho. This guy's going to be mad. He staggered him. I just side busted me. Yeah. Alright, that guy is getting killed. Yeah, for anybody watching, uh, feel free to ask your questions. The uh, developers are here, so. Hello. A unique opportunity. <laughs> Reaper mode can be a lifesaver in this, too. Oh, yeah. If you got a good Reaper buildup, because that'll be like a good break from uh, yeah. getting having guys smash in all the Yeah, there's a lot of strategy. I mean, do you want to go for execution chance, which increases yeah. obviously your chance to execute guys? Do you want to go for things that give you Reaper form, because Reaper form makes you almost invulnerable. Do you want uh, Wrath Regeneration or Health Regeneration? All of those things are good, but you have to make a sacrifice somewhere. Uh, oh, that hurts. Let's just end this guy right here. Oh, it's not, it's not looking good for the home team. Unlike in the first game, you can actually dash in, in our alternate mode. You can you know, chase down enemies that you knock away and stuff. It's pretty cool. Ooh. I love that crossover. I should do other things, but it's just so fun. <laughs> His tenacity is endearing. You've done well. Would you take this prize and take you? Or continue further. So that's the uh, the question of the crucible. Do you want to take the loot, risk it? Do you want to, well, or risk it? I Risking it is. Oh, I, I'm. I'll crush these guys. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I have no friends. But uh, yeah. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for having me on. I have to take off. Cool. But, uh, looks great. Excited. Uh, good luck on your launch. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thanks for coming in. Bye, Ryan. Bye. Bye. My heart will go on. We'll do one one set of last waves here and then uh, get up to the next uh, yeah, sure. level 10, see what kind of stuff you get out of it. Yeah. The other funny thing about this is, you know, like when you first get it, I think you go into this mode and you're like, oh my god, this thing is so hard. But then like you get and you're finishing the game and yeah. then it's also a good gauge of how powerful you've become as a character. Right. Coming back and checking yourself out. Oh, see, I let him get me. 
But the guys don't scale to your level. No, nope. they just they're 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 balanced for you being a specific level. So right. you go in a little low, they own you up, and then you go on high and okay, not high, but you go on higher level, mm -hmm. and uh, you uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. No, exactly you know what, saying. what you're saying. Death is legal. Other things are not. All right, so here we go. Throw him behind me, slam him down, bring him back. Oh, dodge out of the way. I always like doing that. I have a teleport slash. Oh, instant just frame. I'm not going to tell you how to do that. <laughs> so you can hear that guy back in the back there. And Ben, does it always show you all the enemies that you have in the wave right away, or does it stagger them within a wave? Not always. It's it's rare that there's multiple waves within a wave, but mm -hmm. there's a there's a couple. It does happen. Okay. Yeah, because I was thinking I saw some guys pop up halfway yeah. through this one. Oh my god, this guy! Flip him behind me, dash under, pull him back down. So people in the chat are asking about collectibles. What kind of collectibles? I know it's not crucible related. But right. No, that's fine. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, totally uh, fine. So you saw like before we we're showing you the, the the stone bits. Is that what they're called? Yeah. Like the collectibles. And exactly. how many of those? There's like oh, there's a lot. I know uh, that, right? I think sixteen nine. <laughs> no, <laughs> there's even more than that. I think so. But we also have a collectible. There's a uh, pages of the dead yep. that unlock a uh, uh, arbiter scroll. Arbiter scrolls. Relics. The, yeah, they argue the all the legendaries. There's uh, the gnomes. I don't gnomes. know anything about that. Don't know anything about that. I don't know what you're talking those about. are the very rare. See if you can find some of those. I have no idea. And that is totally not a Games Radar exclusive, or it might be. Yeah, <laughs> who knows? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if it were real. <laughs> but uh, no. there's a ton of stuff to collect, and it, you know, if you really want to be a completionist and 100% this game, it will take you quite a while. Yeah, and it's not an annoying. You know, additional yeah. time. You get, you actually do get something good out of it. No, there's always cool stuff to get out of all this stuff. Like, there's no achievement tied to the Boatman coins, but there's a hundred of them. If, you know, a hundred of them. Yeah, if you, you want, want to collect there's, every one. There's actually nothing tied to um, one of the other collectibles. Oh, the um, the relics, the page of the dead, the which one is stone it? bites. No, there's still more collectibles. Yeah. You don't have to collect all of the Arbiter's Maze scrolls. Oh, like right, if you know right. the direction to go. Oh, I'm gonna die. I'll give myself some health back. Yeah, you don't have to collect all of those. I mean, if you know the direction, that's you probably cheated. But yeah, <laughs> you don't actually need them. It doesn't actually unlock the floor. Right. The direction right. will always work. But I think anybody, you're, no matter how you play this game, you're bound to run across at least a few of these collectibles. Oh yeah, absolutely. you know, you'll always find like some Page of the Dead or see some of the Stone yep. Bites and wonder what are these things. You know. Right. Let's try. What do we have? We have a good Arm Blades in here. Hmm. That's no, a low level one. I really like that one. Mm. So grabbing all of those collectibles. We Get super cool. secret loot, or it depends. Like, uh, like you're saying, like for the stone bites, will like actually increase your abilities and everything. The uh, page of the dead will open up uh, uh, treasure troves, basically. I guess is that the best way to say them? Yeah. The, yeah, so Thomas, you get, yeah. Yeah. So you get like I think it's ten to open up one of the doors in each zone, and they'll like bring you to like basically treasure vaults. Um, the arbiter's maze scrolls will eventually allow you to traverse the arbiter's maze, which is kind of its own dungeon thing going on. Set that guy on fire. Good job. Finish this last wave here. This is one of the rare weapons that actually has a projectile on it. So he oh, awesome. he, yeah, he throws a disc. Was that the arm blade you were using? The arm blades. Yeah. Oh, that guy's raging. Gym tan laundry. <laughs> All right, there we go. Got him. <laughs> that guy's pissed too. All right, we got him. Bring him out in the center. Show him who's t who's boss. Here he comes. I don't think so. <laughs> Got his thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, now he brought his friends. Yeah, oh, that little is, buddies. That's uncalled for. That was that's low. Just, that's just uncalled for. Oh, now he's pissed. Gotta run away from him because he's pretty brutal. Oh, he's almost dead. I'm almost 
worth it. But see, I'm right now I'm using low level gear. You can kill these guys. You can kill entire waves in like 10 seconds if you have the right gear. Right. I would say for anybody uh, trying to make it through all 100 waves of the Crucible, I would definitely have a health on kill weapon. Yep. Or something like that to uh, keep getting your health back because you will run out of potions. I don't know where he was going. His flight was canceled. Yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. So, that's like round 10. Yeah. That's round 10. So, we'll come in here. He'll give us the choice. This time, we'll take it. You have done well. I want that hammer. I know. That would be a good one. That would be a good prize. Hint. Give me that hammer. So, let's take the loot. He's so excited to give you the prize. Yeah. He's a good host. I'm not knocking him for that. It's just kind of some of the He'd side comments. He'd be kind comments. of annoying in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Orange juice it is. <laughs> I've made you cereal. Poached <laughs> eggs. Beer. Oh, wait. That's the... Oh, possessed weapon. Two? Two? Oh, my God. That's my lucky dude. Dude, this was the... Yeah. Can I totally take the save weapon. home? Wow. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> oh, I don't have any room. <laughs> no so room. I'll show you possessed weapon really quick, yeah, and then we'll let's cut let's out of here. juice up one of these things. All right. So let's uh, drop some of this crap. Yeah, dump one of these suckers. Get out of there. We don't like greens. So we'll come in here. Got to possess hammer. So we have the ability to obviously equip, upgrade, drop, rename. We can change the name. Um, so, oh, why do I do that? I'm good at the menus. <laughs> so we'll go over here and we'll say upgrade. And as you can see, the, the more rare the weapon, the higher, the more EXP you get toward your upgrade. You can see the skulls up at the top, and that tells you the level, or how many times you've upgraded that weapon. So, for example, let's come in here. Actually, that's a huge one. We see Ice Damage, Wrath on Crit, and Reaper Energy on Execute. We'll Do select it. that. And, uh, so so it's showing you it increased the damage, and now these are the abilities that weapon had, so you yep. get to choose. So Wrath on Crit, so that's a huge one. So now there's another one we want to look here. This is what Jay was talking, health per kill. Uh, strength is a great one to always have for, for heavy weapons. Uh, let's go Health on Crit. And there's health on crit, or we can give it a little more wrath on crit, uh, but it's more efficient to take a whole new stat. Than yeah, bigger increase exactly. than to do some exactly. again. Exactly. Awesome. So we come, and uh, like Jay said, the damage is going up as well. So now we have oh, critical damage. That's what we want. So this is pretty much the best weapon. Twenty percent <laughs> additional critical damage. Um, let's see what else do we have in here. And you can feed it armor too. It doesn't really matter. You know, you can put health on it. You can put wrath on it. You can put. Let's see, so strength, that would be a good one. And usually a possessed weapon, you know, a lot of times, I don't know, you know, you usually find a better weapon or piece of armor, usually about every level, but yeah. I think possessed weapons usually end up keeping them for three or four levels at least because mm -hmm. they're just that much more powerful and you've built them up. I mean, assuming you're, yeah. you've sacrificed and maxed exactly. them to level ASAP. Let's see what else. So it looks like you could upgrade it five times? Is yeah, five, five times. Five levels. Five times, right. but four stats. Right. Four, four new stats that you get on it. So let's go. Uh, there's a health on. That was nothing. It gave no XP. Um... Let's see, what else do we get? Actually, I'm not sure what we should give this one, but yeah, you can... Let's see. Some of them are out of my level range right now. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else we have on here. I'm trying to look at a good stat. So, strength, strength is always is a good, good one. Yeah. So you get a huge upgrade, but if you do something that you've already... Actually, these are all new, which is huge. We'll go strength. But yeah, you look at it now, <clears throat> and... Uh, you know, you're getting 512 damage out of that. So 362 is the top end. And if you look at any of the other, well, that, that one's pretty pretty badass. It's a <laughs> high level. But uh, we can actually go one more, and we can get that up to almost 400 damage, plus all of the additional stats that we've added. That green only has lightning damage. So, awesome. But, yeah, that's how possessed weapons work, and you can go They're in addicting, here. too. Once you get one of these things, you're always like, Yeah, oh, so we man. have this possessed yeah, weapon. So pumped on it. I love customizable we'll stuff. We'll upgrade yeah. that one, and then we'll take our other possessed weapon, and we'll feed it to that. It says, You sure? Yeah. And so we just fed a possessed weapon to a possessed weapon. <laughs> right. So, yeah, you can do some really crazy stuff, and all of the stuff that you put in, say, a level 5 possessed weapon will carry over to your level 10 possessed weapon, uh, but you only get one of those stats. You don't get all four back. So, But it's cool. It doesn't yeah. feel like you're wasting it. And they sell for a ton of money. Yeah. Yeah, end of the day, if uh, you have a possessed weapon you're done with it, you can always trade it in for bankrolling. Yeah, your next, exactly. uh, <laughs> yeah. Your next investment. So that's pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, that's a little bit of everything. It's yeah. awesome, guys. Well... Thanks for coming by. Thanks for everybody uh, watching the stream. Uh, when can we expect the game?
tomorrow, midnight tonight, if you get near a store that's doing Just it. a few hours, exactly. Yeah, yeah come on out. Start waiting in line right now. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I'm already in line. Yeah, I'm waiting. I'm in the Matrix. I can't wait for this game to come out. Let's do it. Yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> Thanks for coming by. And everybody out there, be sure to check out a review on gamesradar.com. Coming tomorrow, so make sure you read up on that. And uh, check out Darksiders, too. Thanks Sweet. a lot, guys. I Thank agree. you. Bye. All right, bye.